Good afternoon, Mohammed Safar Iqbal, or as I may call you, Safar. Uh, Safar, we met a little under four years ago in the PhD writing course of She. Indeed. And it is a true pleasure to interview you about your upcoming defense. Thank you, Rachel. Uh, so, yeah, first of all, congratulations on getting your thesis accepted for defending. Um, Safar, how did you celebrate? Thank you very much, uh, Juliet, for having me. Uh, indeed, it, um, it, it was a lifelong learning experience. And uh, I remember it was February 2017 when we first met in our first PhD proposals writing course. Um, and yes, uh, it was a big day to uh, know that my thesis has been approved. And uh, I celebrated with my wife. I took her for a fancy dinner and we celebrated it together. It's good to hear that you celebrated properly. Thank you. Um, so for people who have not been following you for over the past four years, um, could you maybe give an elevator pitch of your PhD project? I would like to shed some light on the background of the project so that we can contextualize the project problem and the goals that we tried to achieve in this project. Mm -hmm. Um, we know that faculty development uh, is one of the main tools that many institutes use to uh, support their faculty uh, in their teaching practices. Uh, however, there, however, there are some con uh, contemporary challenges uh, in faculty development. But first of all, uh, there's a lack of structure. And second, there's a lack of assessment of the teaching competence after training. Uh, so recently, EPS has, uh, have been advocated Entrustable professional activities, as you may call them, have been advocated as a, as a, a viable approach uh, to train and entrust uh, the teachers. So uh, um, in my project, in, 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 uh, we conducted a, a literature review and tried to explore and document the viability of entrustable professional activities for teacher training. Uh, this was my first study, and we uh, concluded that, among other conclusions, that uh, an EPS framework for small group teachers uh, uh, is missing so far in the literature, which was the main project goal of my, uh, of my PhD. Um, so to fill this gap, we, we planned uh, 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 the development of EPS framework in two stages. Uh, first stage was the development phase, uh, which was my second study. Uh, in study, um, in my second study, we actually co-created the framework, EPS framework, uh, um, through students and teachers. We conducted multiple workshops, which included their training, designing, uh, and uh, um, consensus. Um, after this uh, second study, we had a framework, but we were not sure um, if the co-creation approach uh, was feasible. So uh, since it was a novel approach to design or co-create EPAs, so we did our third study and explored the perceptions of the students and teachers uh, to see how do they perceive their co-creation experience. And we saw that uh, um, the participation of the students and teachers was perceived essential, timely, um, um, and uh, a just advancement in, in the context of faculty development. Uh, afterwards, we validated our framework in, in our um, fourth study, where we recruited uh, uh, international health professions educationists around the globe and uh, we conducted a modified Delphi study in three rounds. And uh, we uh, validated our previously developed framework. Um, lastly, uh, in our fifth and final study, we explored the uh, feasibility of uh, complementing uh, EPAs with an instructional design model, uh, four components instructional design model, also known as 4CID which is an evidence-based model. And uh, uh, we, we have, in this uh, perspective study, we have proposed that uh, EPAs can serve as an outcome of the faculty development program, whereas the 4CID model can serve uh, as a viable approach to orchestrate the uh, training program 
or the instructional design of the training program. So um, that was pretty much it. We conducted five studies in this project and every study had a different approach, different design. And uh, uh, in the end, we, we achieved uh, um, a thoroughly designed and validated EPS framework for small group facilitators. I am impressed by the coherence in your study so far. I think it's a, a very nice, complete picture of uh, your project that you've given. You. Um, and that is truly because you've put a lot of work, I think, in the coherence between these, uh, these studies that you present in your thesis. Um, I'm, I'm wondering what is your, and maybe this is a hard question, uh, but what is your main takeaway from your PhD project at Chi? Well, uh, first of all, our project has resulted in a uh, comprehensive EPA framework, which was uh, which went through multiple design approaches. Uh, and then the second thing is that we have designed and validated it by including all stakeholders, which are relevant to the faculty development. For example, students, teachers, expert health professional educationists. Uh, so the first product of our PhD project is the EPA framework, which is developed and validated by all stakeholders. Uh, the second would be uh, the contribution this project has made in the context of co-creation. Uh, so we, we introduced a novel context in, uh, in co-creation, which is faculty development. And uh, this is the first time uh, EPAs have been co-created by students. Uh, and we, we received very positive uh, results uh, in the co-creation study. Um, thirdly, um, I can say that the framework was, uh, we, we have also proposed that the integration of the four CID and EPAs uh, uh, is essential uh, if we really want to structure and well design a faculty development framework. So uh, I think these are the main three take home products of our PhD project. Uh, a validated framework, uh, co-creation in faculty development, and uh, complementing EPS with a evidence-based 4CID model to structure faculty development program. Thank you. Um, so far, the, over these past years, uh, I've seen you grow a lot through your PhD trajectory, your journey as a PhD student. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was wondering, how, how do you reflect upon this journey? Well, I must say that it was the best and the most fruitful uh, and very enriched learning experience of my life. Uh, my PhD journey has taught me many things, uh, which I believe they have groomed me uh, personally and professionally. Uh, I learned how to manage time more, pro more appropriately, how to meet deadlines, how to regulate my own self, my learning, uh, and how to become a methodical researcher. Uh, I, I deeply thank my supervisors. I cannot uh, finish this without mentioning them uh, because I had an amazing team of promoters, uh, Professor Yohan, uh, Dr. Karen, and my local co-promoter, Dr. Mohammed, uh, was in the supervisory panel. Um, I don't think that I have enough words to explain my gratitude that I have for my promoters, but I can surely say that I consider myself extremely lucky that I had them as my promoters. Yeah, so speaking about that time management, uh, Safar, you've, you've written this thesis uh, next to another full-time job. So I think it's nice of you to thank your supervisor team. Um, and they're always very important, but I also think you've done an impressive uh, job. Uh, so uh, just fishing for tips here, what habits helped you in, in finishing this PhD in such an impressive, time first of all thank you very much for the kind remarks uh yeah it was indeed uh, uh, it was literally a roller coaster right uh, as we finished five studies in two years um i strongly believe that uh, i think there are multiple factors that played their role in the completion of my project in such a short time uh first of all i must say that i had to put a lot of effort and hard work to it uh, so, um, for example, I dedicated a time slot uh, for my studies in my daily uh, routine, and I stick to it quite religiously. 
um, if I may um, flaunt about it, uh, on average, I worked on my project for more than six hours on daily basis, sometimes even more. Um, so I had to put a lot of effort, a lot of hard work to it so that I can finish it in time. Um, the second tip I can give it, so the first thing is time management. Time management is extremely important. Uh, I usually dedicated my evenings and night time to my studies. Uh, the second thing is very well thought and well planned studies. Uh, whenever we plan our projects, since we have to plan at least four projects, four studies uh, within the broader umbrella of the PhD project, uh, we must plan our studies very carefully. Uh, studies which are feasible, executable, uh, can be performed within uh, within the time frame, and most importantly, we have the resources to conduct those studies. Uh, so, if 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 your study meets all these uh, checklist criteria, then I think I think a criteria that I think it, it's a good study. So, um, I think planning a study is uh, is very important before executing it, so that you know where do you stand. Uh, lastly, as I said, beyond my personal efforts, there are other factors that also play their role. Uh, for example, um, I cannot ignore the significant amount of contribution and sacrifice that my wife has made during this journey. Uh, she was literally my support system. Um, she looked after, we had um, uh, twins um, during my PhD after first year. So, we actually found ourselves lost what to do. We didn't know how we are going to manage. So I think she, it's very brave of her that uh, she look after the kids single-handedly and she gave me enough time to work on my project. So I, I owe her a lot for doing so much for me, for us. Um, I again would like to mention that supervisors again have a very, um, um, positive or negative role to play here. Uh, for, for example, if your supervisors, they give you very timely feedback, uh, constructive uh, feedback and uh, thought provoking that pushes you to learn more, you know, that encourages you to dig more and see and explore if, if there's more to do. I think that's very important. Um, I'm very lucky in this regard that my supervisors were extremely uh, quick very thorough and uh, very meticulous in their feedbacks. Um, and they always, they had this sense of positive tone in their feedback, which always gave me a sense of uh, belonging and uh, encouragement. I think your answers speak for the fact that you truly have a dream team. It's the correct word, it, it was a dream team. Yeah, well, and, and of course, uh, with such an impressive record, I can only see uh, you finishing your PhD as a great start of the rest of your academic career. Um, and I was wondering, I hope, of course, to see you many times uh, again in the Xi community. How, how do you plan to use the Xi community to continue your work in uh, health professions education research? Well, um, I highly value uh, uh, School of Health Professions Education, first of all. Uh, I cannot uh, finish this uh, talk without saying that uh, it was my dream to pursue PhD uh, in, health in School of Health Professions Education at Maastricht University. So I'm extremely grateful. I'm extremely thankful to Xi and Professor Yohon for accepting me in the program and for giving me this opportunity to seek PhD uh, from such a prestigious institution. Uh, as far as my future plans are concerned, I wish to collaborate more in the future with these fine scholars. Um, I'm also a member of the uh, special interest group of the co-creation, as you're aware. Um, I highly value the contribution of this group towards the student participation in higher ed and health professions education. And I plan to keep my participation in this group, but with more zest and zeal. Uh, I also hope that my contribution to the Xi activities will continue to grow uh, with time as and when I get an uh, as and when I get an opportunity to embark upon. Um, 
thank you so much for taking the time for this interview. I think we uh, we got a really nice picture of what you've been working on and what you're planning to do in the future. Um, Safar will be defending his PhD in an online session on December 15th, 2020. Uh, now, if you missed this, I can say from personal experience that he is also great at responding uh, to his email. So feel free to contact him with any questions you may have. Thank you for having me, Judith. I'm extremely grateful to you for giving me this opportunity. And I hope that my PhD project will help uh, health professions community uh, in better professionalization of small group facilitators. Thank you very much.